Oh, hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Out the Box podcast. It's late Sunday evening, 16th of July. So there's only one thing to talk about, really, for us. Somerset face a trip to North Ants this week in the county championship. No, not really. Not really at all. Somerset, a Vitality Blast champion, Harry. you still got Come your on, t-shirt on. You're still buzzing. We're all still buzzing. 18 years, four finals, three semi-finals. It's been a long, long time. And so many times the lads of Somerset have had to watch those fireworks go off and celebrate the achievements of another team. Last night, it was Lewis Gregory lifting that trophy. Harry, I was stood next to you for the final ball. By the time Tom Kodak had more taken that catch, you were about eight rows in front of me, I think. <laughs> yeah, fair comment. I Well, I I would say I support Somerset more than I support any football team or anything else. If, you know, people in England say, who do you support? And it's, you know... It's our life at the moment, especially in the summer. And I was just, yeah, amazing. All the all the heartbreaks, all the all the years of heartache, which has happened the last few years, is just amazing. Yeah, we couldn't hold it in. And it was great to be in the Somerset stand as we were with all the faithful there. And just the emotions was incredible. And I've still been buzzing all day today. I've gone to two different cricket matches today and so many people with Somerset shirts and hoodies and talking to me about it. And so many different messages from random people who've all come out of the woodwork. <laughs> I've barely heard from all summer suddenly jump on the bandwagon but that's great it shows how much impact Somerset has across the West Country there's so many numbers and stats we could talk about and we could go through and we will go through some of them but Triggs you've been to plenty of final days yourself uh you won it a couple of years ago as well with Nottinghamshire like they're not easy days the kind of the mental strain of two semi-finals and a final a lot of waiting around a lot of adrenaline um like what are your kind of memories of that experience no, I agree. They're, they're, they're not easy days. I mean, I mean it, it sort of slightly concerned me, the draw, because I suppose on paper and with respect to all the teams that were there, I think everyone kind of felt that Somerset and Surrey were, you know, the, the favourites. And, and when you get drawn in the semi-final with the other uh, perceived favourite, I think you put, put so much sort of mental effort into getting over that hurdle that you forget that you've got a final to play when you eventually do get into the final. So I know that, you know, depending on, you know, whether you play first or second, you know, um, that there are challenges. I mean, I, I think many years on now, I think the, the second team format is, you know, two 2020s in a day. And I've played a few of those and they're exhausting, actually. You know, like, I know it's... Um, they are, you know, short games, but I think they're such fast-paced games, and especially in front of a massive crowd. The chances are the guys didn't sleep, you know, great the night before. You know, so much energy. But I'm glad the guys sort of stuck it through um, and came out on top. Like I said, we've been to a number as a club and not got over the line. They are great days, right? but, you know, you don't want to be that person watching the other team lift the trophy. So, yeah, I'm over the moon for the lads. I was in the I was in the kitchen. I just got back from my game. Um, I was in the kitchen watching that last um, few moments and I just thought, you know, it actually dawned on me that, you know, the small margins in the game because Daniel Sams is a dangerous player. I think if that's two inches further to Cola Cadmore's left and that goes for four, I, I actually think Somerset are in a real hot, you know, sticky situation. Um, the finals I've played in for Somerset, those moments have gone against us. This time it went with us and um, and it was amazing. And you definitely, uh, you definitely, as Harry says, feel the buzz around the county today. It was an odd day, wasn't it? I think finals days, notoriously, they're not actually like high run scoring affairs very often. You don't often see 200 plays 200 on finals day uh, and Ben Warren who's also alongside us like 142 against Surrey most of us I think if we're being honest the Surrey All-Stars we felt that was a bit light at the interval but what Somerset went and did with the ball was just unbelievable after that yeah ab absolutely I think you know that the scores in the first game were, were slightly higher and you know, as you mentioned sometimes that those scores do get lower as the day goes on but but yeah, I think everybody at halftime just felt that the, you know the boundary options dried up in the summer setting ins. Surrey bowled very very well. I mean, there's no getting away. Surrey bowled very very well. They, they didn't bowl much loose loose stuff at all. So yeah, halfway I think everyone felt everyone in the press box that you know the huge amount of 
Somerset contingent in the press box felt that, that it wasn't enough. Um, but then when Craig Overton bowled Laurie Evans, hope. Um, and with hope, you get momentum and, and, and Somerset's bowling was, was just brilliant, wasn't it? Uh, you forget, Will Jacks hit the first ball of the innings for four and you think, ah, oh, here we go. This really isn't going to be the day. But Triggs, Craig Overton, right, in this tournament, not just his bowling, like he often bowls three or four up top. And and so often with other teams, we see, you can sometimes see five or six bowlers bowled in the power play. And Craig was on the live stream match this week and he said he doesn't do much different to what he would do in a championship game. He just tries to hit good areas and, and force batters into mistakes. Um, and also 22 catches he took, I think, in the tournament. That's a, a high for any T20 tournament. The one that I really enjoyed, and you could see he really enjoyed it, Jamie Overton, his twin brother, hit one down his throat at long on. Me and Becky were stood right behind him in the middle tier. There were no other, like very few other Somerset fans. And we felt we were up on our feet, giving him a massive roar. He turned up and looked at us. So we thought he looked at us anyway. He was just roaring. But he's a man you know really well, Triggs. And like he just has not carried that side, but led the side. Well, I think I think you've got to, got to credit the the management and the captaincy because you know i think with with respect that you know craig's sort of 2020 bowling at the death uh, over the years probably hasn't been um you know the greatest in terms of, of run rate and i think kind of for the very reason why he's bowling at top is so good because he's a tall bloke because he gets a lot of bounce batsmen are able to get underneath him with the older ball um and obviously that's something you don't really want for the death end. It's why people like Alfonso Thomas in particular were brilliant. You know, short, skiddy. You've got a bit more margin for error to get your Yorkers in. Uh, and, and I think it was re really brave management um, to, 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 to persevere with bowling the four up top, um, especially the way that sort of, you know, Rossington, you know, goes after it in particular in, and in the, fi you know, the final with, uh, with Dan Lawrence as well. So, I think it was it's really unusual for a club to use that tactic um, and for it to yield a trophy. And it is, I, I think you've got to credit, you know, the, the, the thinking behind that. That's, um, you know, no other club has done that. And, and the combination with Matt Henry, irresistible. I mean, Edge Baston is one of the great venues. I don't think it's the greatest wicket for T20 cricket, you know, especially when it's had 80 overs on it. Um, often... It becomes a little bit of a, a bit of a sticky dog, you know. The the ball starts to grip in the surface, as we saw. Um, but Somerset exploited those conditions brilliantly. Craig Craig Overton and Matt Henry were just they were sensational all throughout the competition. Yeah, they really were. So Matt Henry with his fourth wicket and it in the final, and it turned out to be the match winning wicket. Brilliant catch from TKC. I think Lewis said afterwards on his interview, uh, "I've never seen him move that fast this season," um, but he moved. When it mattered, that took Matt Henry to 31 wickets. So he actually nudged above Ben Green as the leading wicket taker. He's also only played 14 of the 17 games. They've rested him for a few. Um, and I did hear someone suggest that Kent didn't wanted him back, but not to play T20. So if that's true, uh, that feels like a, a little bit of a mistake. But H, I think one of the things this year has been that batting top order, right? TKC, Smead and Banton. And they've, they've taken us to the final and they, and they all got starts on the day. But what they've all always said is that everyone in this side is capable of winning a game. And we've seen Ben Green, 30 wickets in the tournament. But Sean Dixon on the day, he, his runs, it was only 30 not out in the semi and it was 50 in the final. Just invaluable. Absolutely. And if you think about it, I don't reckon there's any other team in the Blast who Tom Lambie wouldn't get into. If you think of it like that, left-hander, quality player, scored those amazing runs against Gloucestershire on Sky. And so many of the commentators come to Taunton and talk about Tom Lamanby and how highly they rate him. And he can't get in this side. And that's not a disservice to Tom Lamanby, really. Did all right in the batting when Bantam was injured in one of the games. But Sean Dixon has come in, done well. And I was talking to you, wasn't I, about certain players just seem to do well. On final day, lower scoring pitches, had a few overs, as Triggs just said. And I was thinking, Jordan Cox, Joe Weatherly, and Sean Dixon can now join that sort of bracket. Those guys are bat sort of four or five, rebuild, and still manage to score a decent strike rate over 100, but, but get the job done when it's a little bit of trouble. And, you know, I was impressed with Joe Weatherly actually got the top score on the tournament, um, on the on the finals day. Um, but Sean Dixon was crucial top scoring in, in both innings and played some great shots. 
Yeah, he did. Let's take it away from like the on-field events. Like Ben, you were up in the press box the whole day. Like it's actually a very busy working day for you. Uh, you you've had all the social media to sort. Like, what's your experience of the day? Like, can you be partisan up there, or do you have to keep your head down? Do you have to stay quiet? Yeah, it's quite difficult. <laughs> it is quite difficult. We, we we were on the front front row, and and the way that the press press arrangements work, so you've got all four counties that are on the the road together. So each media team is sort of sat next to each other now luckily we we kind of have a pretty good relationship with with the, with the counties there's certain individuals that, that have represented more than one one club but um <laughs> there um yeah it was it was the, the the toughest thing from our side was the turnaround between the the semi and the final like it was normally you get a little bit of time to prep a game i.e toss team news things like that but the turnaround time was insane the, the the, the the final wicket was taken. I think it was Will Smead out the boundary, wasn't it, for for the um, Surrey game? And Lewis Gregory had to go and do the toss for the final. And, and I had Sky and Test Match Special coming at me saying, "What what's the what's the team for the finals?" I, I genuinely I have no idea. Like we were just walking off the pitch. Um, so that was really really tricky. But yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic um, press box, um, and it was great to be up there. We had a great view of the. Um, of the TKC catch, um, but again, we were a little bit nervous about going out with the we've won um, comms, just because after last year, you never quite know as he grounded it. You know, is, it looks clean from first. <laughs> it looked clean from first view, but you know, you don't want to put the we're champions out, and then somehow there's an umpire review, and so it was all a bit of carnage. But we we got there in the end. <laughs> Yeah, you did. And Harry, as I said, you and I, we went down to sit in the with the Somerset fans. I, I was writing for one of the newspapers. I had a 9.45 deadline. Anyone who is thinking back at the game, the game didn't finish till 9.55. So I had to submit my report when Essex were eight wickets down and say, this assumes a Somerset win and they take all 20 wickets because that's what I've written. But hey, it was just like wonderful. We were in around with, like, you know, Polly Rhodes, the scorer's husband, Dave, the whole Abel family were in there. And actually uh, the, the younger brothers, uh, Will, um, they look a bit like, um, and I was chatting to Will and he said, oh yeah, Tom and I often get mistaken um, for each other. Will often gets called Tom, but it happened last week, believe it or not. They were actually sat together um, and someone went up to Will and said, oh, were you playing for Somerset the other day? And he went, uh, no, I wasn't, but the chap sat next to me. So apparently Will Abel looks more like Tom Abel than Tom Abel does, um, which I really enjoyed. But Harry, you could feel the emotion in there. Like in, everyone was together. Um, it was it was tense, but those wickets were celebrated like wonderfully. But Triggs made a good point because we got them nine down and we're all thinking this is one. But actually, what was it? 15 off 10? If that goes for four, it's 11 off eight and Essex are the favourites. Um but uh, like sum up what it was like to be in there. Yeah, there's so much I could say on this. I'm actually on the second screen as we're talking. This this podcast interrupted me replaying the game for the first time. Essex is currently 108 for eight, needing 38 from 23 balls. It's still doable. Aaron Beer's just come in, Dan Sam's a 29 out, and I'm watching it back now. And you get such a different vantage point from the stand in the ground, then to the press box, and then to watch you on Sky. It's completely different things you notice. And I didn't realise quite how close... Sounds was getting Essex. It was only a, one of the chats behind who was sat sat with Craig Overton's girlfriend. Um, they were sat in a row behind the North Devon boys, and he shouted down to me, "Harry, don't celebrate too much yet. Don't get too carried away because Sounds could win them this." And just to touch on Sounds, like MVP of the tournament, I think he was or Player of the Day, amazing. And I just think this is worth mentioning the mental things about cricket. We were having a few beers, me, Ben, and all the players. It's great to see the the players all mingling into the early hours of this morning. And at, what was it, 4, 4.30 in the morning? Darren Sam stops having a beer, goes to his room, picks up his golf clubs, his cricket bag, all his bag, goes down the left. I said to the Essex media guy we're chatting, where's he off to? Oh, he's got a flight at five o'clock. He's playing in the American T20 League tonight. It's <laughs> How ridiculous is that? Sorry, Miss Son, I'm near I'm doing it. But it shows that, you know, the, the level of cricket these guys have to play from one continent to another. But there, there's so many talking points from yesterday. And I think... The main summary is it wasn't easy. It never is with Somerset. There were proper nail-biting moments in that second innings and Sam's really had the game for him and it was getting really close. If TKC doesn't take that absolutely spectacular grab, then yeah, I think they'd be in the box seat as Trig said earlier. It's great to have overseas players who really care. You could see, actually, if you look back on Sky, there's a video yeah. 
Sam's doesn't move from the spot for a good five or six seconds after that catch. He is rooted there, legs apart, like he was absolutely gutted. Uh, he took them so close. Triggs, what does it mean? You and Hildy, you know, had that 2019 one day cup final. And I know how dear a moment that is to your heart. Like, can you try and put into words what this win means for Somerset? <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it's huge, isn't it? Um, especially for, you know, the, the young crop, your, your, your Smeeds, your, your Bantons, um, you know, th those guys of that age that have got, you know, long careers, you know, getting, getting sort of trophies under the belt, I think only, only will hopefully bring more in the future, you know, um, we're we're a small big club, uh, and I, and I think that yes, we've had a spattering of, of of trophies, but it'd be nice to see that a little bit more consistent over the next sort of ten years. So, like I said, winning a trophy early on in a player's career, I think, is really important. Um, and and I think my 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 sort of favourite moment was um, watching via the the social media stuff that Ben put out. Um, the the guys mimicking what we did in 2019 singing the blackbird song in front of the stand and that brought back a lot of very very fond memories and you know you can hear um even though it was pretty tone deaf the singing standard of the lads um you can you can like sense the passion in the voices and, and that brought back a lot of very fond memories so yeah new, new group of players uh yeah it was just a. It was just an excellent day. Like I said, two scrappy performances. Certainly not vintage. Certainly not what we expect to see from a Somerset team. But they got the job done, and that is what it's all about on a final. Um, I was going to paraphrase Ian Holloway with his famous "getting just getting the job done, ugly whatever it takes." But um, you know, it's it's exactly that. It's uh, it's a real positive thing for the club, the Southwest, and a, and a young group of very high quality cricketers occasionally the best team does win the tournament and when you win 15 games out of 17 when you take 151 wickets out of 170 i don't think anyone could argue you know you've got the two top leading the two leading wicket takers three of the top 10 batters like if it was going to be somerset's year this was the one um but ben finally just a there was a very touching moment at the end and i, I think it it showed what Somerset is as a club, I think, in just 20, 30 seconds. Tom Kohler Cadmore, uh, you know, young Bodie, who I think he'd met at the kit launch. Is that right? Um, and the guys have followed his journey like he's followed their journey. And it was just really special to see in the midst of those celebrations, Tom remember that Bodie was there and give him a moment he will never forget. Yeah, 100%. I think that's that's my overarching memory of the last 24 hours it the on the pitch is was incredible and unforget unforgettable but but some of the moments around it the, the human moments you know the the, the the we i think everyone will have read the, the situation with with Bodie and how the players have, have have sort of followed his journey um also there were stories you know last night when we were celebrating there were kids and families um Matt Henry gave the match ball to a to a five year old kid, and that those are the bits that you know, that's not necessarily normal in professional sport. You know these these guys genuinely care, and um, those are my overarching memories of the last twenty four hours. Is we want it, but we want it in the right way. H best memory, favorite memory, something you'll hold on to from the day. I think it's the, the aftermath, the positive comments from so many mates who aren't Somerset fans. Surrey fans or Essex Hampshire but from all around the country and the county best team amazing fielding like we were discussing the stand we couldn't believe our own Morgan kept them on the radio how well Essex have fielded when they let a few fall and I thought well by Somerset standards that's not good fielding I think you realise on finals day how good Somerset's fielding is compared to the other three sides that were on finals day and that for me was well there's so many special moments I mean I was going to also mention that the tactical decision was bold brave cool Triggs is probably a good one to get in on this because I remember you coming in for Chris Nash for the final. That's quite rare, isn't it? For someone to change, for a team to change personnel from the semi to the final. I thought Jason Kerr and Sarge, they were the ones who made them do Blackbird after the game. They were spot on to Bashir came in, didn't bowl. It wasn't you know, necessarily the wrong call for the semi-final, but they realised that. They changed it in the final, brought Casey in, bowled a couple of overs and he was there with the bat. And yeah, Trees, I remember you coming in for Chris Nash. That It's rare, isn't it, that they changed from semi-final winning into the final. Yeah, it's unusual, but um, you know, horses for courses. The wicket probably wasn't um, spinning like 
you know, we all expect it to do as much as it has done in previous years. And, and you know, I suppose one of the main turning points of the game was was getting rid of Rossington in the final. I mean, that was an unbelievable catch because he absolutely belted that. So, you know, um, I'm not sure what Shoaib's uh, fielding is like necessarily, but I mean... Casey is probably one of the only guys, you know, in the country that would take a catch like that. I mean, he's got, you know, he's an amazing second, third slip fielder and it came at the pace of a slip fielder. So not many covered catches would have taken that. So, yeah, that was, um, that was a, that was a huge moment in the game for sure. Yeah. It's, um, I think we, like I said, I mean, I think tactically, I think Somerset have been great. Um, the, the 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 Henry Overton combination fantastic. The Overton all four overs pretty much predominantly up top the whole competition. Um, yeah, it was, it's just it's gone exactly the way um, that Somerset wanted it to. And and one of the crazy things is a guy that was signed to steady our four day batting is the batting hero of the finals day, Sean Dixon. Um, when he signed for the club, I don't think. Sarge or Jace would have thought he's going to be uh, our man of the moment for the finals day. So fair play to him because he's had a yeah, tough start. You know, like I said, he would have come to the club expecting to pile on the four day runs that hasn't happened. And um, he's made himself a hero in the Southwest in one day. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely way to finish it. And you're spot on, Triggs. That catch was travelling. Rossington's just hit three boundaries in a row all of a sudden. Rossington goes, Pepper goes the first ball of Henry's next over and Lawrence at the back end of that over. So it was a game-changing catch. Look, folks, we've gone a little bit longer than usual, but I hope you will indulge us. It's a pretty special moment. We've waited a long time to do this podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Somerset, as I said at the top of the show, travel to North Ants on Wednesday. They'll have to lift themselves back up for that one. I'm sure they will have no problem. Sam, Sam, one last thing for me. Go on, go on. Just uh, everyone listening to this podcast. This is a Somerset fan. Wasn't it great listening to all those partisan London commentators on Sky have to be nice to Somerset? <laughs> it was awesome. I was listening to it all day. <laughs> we heard with the Surrey lads and the Middlesex lads. All wanted the London boys to win. Somerset come out on top, get in. You'd have loved it, Trees. The three, Somerset, Surrey. But it was almost like it was Somerset, Hampshire and Essex all against Surrey. Like, even in... Even in the celebrations after, it was like three against one. It was incredible. <laughs> oh, perfect way to end. Right, we are signing off now there. Speak to you soon, folks.